So the one that I chose for us to look individual is one that I think you've talked quite a bit about retrieval practice on your blog and your podcast. So yeah. it's like, it might be fun for folks to see retrieval practice and um, concept mapping compared. In most individual studies, you're gonna see the, the strategy that they're testing against either instruction as usual or just games or just nothing at all. Mm -hmm. um, so an important thing to keep in mind when you're reading an individual study is to always look for what the comparison is. In this study, we know that, oh, uh, and one good way to find out what that is, is again, just read the impact, uh, the abstract, sorry. Mm -hmm. When you read the abstract, again, it gives you a kind of summary of what the work was, what their comparisons was, what they basically found. Okay. Um, so again, like I mentioned, the definitions are almost always in the first paragraph like in here they've just mentioned retrieval practice def, uh, like a high level definition they've mentioned elaborative coding and i think uh, down here somewhere they mentioned they define concept mapping look at that concept mapping um and kind of uh, explaining why so the first few pages kind of help with that the next thing that you want to look at in an experimental study is this section called method. Almost always will be the subtitle of method. Mm -hmm. uh, and looking at this method will help you think about the implementation in your classroom, right? Like what did the researchers do and what did they use to see the impact that they're doing? As an educator, I think this is perhaps the most critical piece. Uh, to see if it fits. Tells you whom it was. Uh, it tells you what the comparisons were. So in this one, there were three comparisons, a study only, a retrieval practice condition, and a concept map and retrieval practice condition. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is a, so that tells you, okay, maybe I can try this in my classroom, right? Like I got high schoolers and that's close enough and I want to try it. So in the materials, they tell you what they read. So in this particular one, the text was three paragraphs, uh, 27 sentences and 262 words in length. Hmm. Uh, and that really helps you put in context, what are your kids doing in your classroom? Are they really only reading three paragraphs? Are they reading more than that? Mm -hmm. That's going to also influence the overall results. And in this study, I think that's what happened, but I'm not getting into that right now. Um, but looking at the materials will help you think about, oh, this is good. For example, like in retrieval practice, a lot of time they use word lists. Mm -hmm. And folks are like, oh, so can retrieval practice only work with word lists? Not really. It's just for experimental ease. It's easier to kind of limit, um, limit how much they're using. Okay. So once, once you see that, um, look at the procedure, which will tell you exactly what they did, how long they spent, that kind of stuff. So over here, I think they put in, yeah, uh, that learning phase students in all three conditions studied the text. And then after that, the retrieval practice condition practiced recalling for 10 minutes and then restudied it. In the concept map and retrieval practice condition, um, they constructed their concept maps for 10 minutes, and then they completed the retrieval practice procedure. Okay. It tells you what the process is. Mm -hmm. um, and in individual studies, the nice thing is even if all these texts with numbers in between kind of makes your eye go cross, you can always jump down to a uh, discussion section. In this particular journal article, there are three experiments. So they have a small discussion up here and then a bigger one down. Okay. So in here, in this discussion, um, they kind of summarize what they found and whether that was expected, why, why not? And if there were any lessons that they learned, how are they going to fix that in the next experiment? So I'm going to skip through experiment two and three for time. Okay. 
And if we go down and see the general discussion, <clears throat> these are usually very interesting to read because in this kind of paper, they talk about all three studies, how they came together, where they converged, where they diverged. But even in a study, even in an article where there's just one experiment, the discussion's a wonderful place for a teacher to look at if they think the study is a fit, because it's going to help you ground that finding in the broader context of the um, literature. Like what we had mentioned, if I'm restricting my search only to 2011, what if there was an influential paper before that? That's most likely going to get cited in the discussion. OK. Um, or even like if there was a whole host of studies, like what happened with seductive details or um, uh, retrieval practice, where suddenly in one year there was like, boom, 15 studies. Like just, just boom. And it was like, yeah. boom, OK. Um, but <laughs> The discussion section will really start piecing all of that together, saying like X found this, Y found this, we found this, ours is similar to what they found, or ours is different than what they found, and here's why we think. So the discussion section's um, really fun in kind of bringing those different pieces of evidence together and also helping you think through, so this is why perhaps it's worked or hasn't worked. Yeah. I'm also thinking, you know, the value for <clears throat> like a K-12 teacher to get into the habit occasionally of reading something like this is mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of the really measured thinking that one gets trained to do as an academic researcher, as opposed to just being like, well, this worked this one day, so let's just go and do that. And let's just go change everything. Like there's just much more, which is part of that frustration that I think we talked about yesterday where you know, if you're if you're busy, you want to know what's going to work and I want to apply it right now. And within academia, things just move a lot more slowly. And it's it's this kind of thinking where you you really want something to be accurate as opposed to quick. <laughs> yes, that is definitely a big difference between the research and practice is the speed with which what happens. And the other thing also is as an educator, if you take the initiative to start reading um, and research article and it and you're not sure if the interpretation's right mm -hmm. I wouldn't self-doubt or kind of beat down on myself at all even if I didn't have the research training because one it takes prior knowledge to know what they're talking about right mm -hmm. like the terms you the more you read them the more familiar you get mm -hmm. the more number of studies you read you start noticing a pattern and you're kind of like oh I see what you mean yeah um, you know as an educator if you pick up an article and you feel like god i don't understand this yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't fret about that um just read what you can if you're not sure look up you know talk to the author or talking to the author might be a little harder but they will email back yeah so you can always send an email or ask to chat or just um, find another resource from that big list of other right. resources we found 